Welcome back to Straight Talk. I'm Laurel Porter. We're talking with Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler. Thank you again for being here. Thank you. You temporarily took over the city's bureaus during the budget session, and this week you reassigned them for the most part to all the commissioners who you originally assigned them to in January, with the exception of the Bureau of Emergency Communications, Portland's 911 Center, that had been Commissioner Fritz's bureau. Why did you keep it for yourself? Well, first of all, let me tell you why I took the bureaus back. I wanted all of the commissioners to work enterprise-wide and not just think about the bureaus they were assigned to during the budget process, but think about the needs of the entire city and all of our bureaus. And I feel that that was a very successful process. The budget was passed with very little conflict. Uh, so uh, I felt good about that. I made what I believed were the right decisions originally in January in terms of how to allocate the bureaus, but uh, I wanted to reserve the right to make changes if necessary, and there were some very discouraging audit reports that came out about the Bureau of Emergency Communication just last week. That's the 9-11 Center, so if you call 911, uh, you expect people to answer the phone and dispatch the call correctly. It's one of the only bureaus that we have where life and death literally hangs in the balance. And the audit report was damning. So uh, given my role as mayor, given that I am already in charge of other public safety bureaus like the police bureau, I felt it was important to pull that into my shop and do everything we can to fix it. In addition, last week we introduced uh, a couple of ordinances that are consistent with the recommendations of the auditor, and I want to see those changes through. And I think I can do that best from within my own shop rather than assigning it to a different commissioner. Well, it sounds like a, a tall order. You also are the police commissioner, so you have the police bureau, and you kept the housing bureau. Some wonder, is that too much? Have you bitten off too much? Well, uh, the, the, I, I think that's a good philosophical question when you run for mayor, period. Uh, but the bottom line is this, I'm gonna get held accountable for the performance of that bureau, regardless of who I assign it to. And I'm highly motivated to do that. My team is highly motivated to make the reforms necessary in that bureau. And it's an important enough bureau, as I say, it's a life or death bureau, that I think we need to bring it in and uh, make those reforms. We're up to the job. I'm very confident in my team. Voters passed a $250 million housing bond last fall to help relieve the housing crisis, build affordable housing. Since you do have the Housing Bureau, what's gonna happen to that money? How will that money be used? So uh, we have a 18 member community-based advisory committee that was created as part of the, the ballot measure. They are uh, defining the best top priorities for how those resources should be spent. They will then complete an advisory report to the Portland Housing Bureau, and there will be a five-member board of outside citizens, again, per the, the ballot measure, who will ensure that the Housing Bureau lives up to the, uh, to the standards set by the advisory committee. Um, so a lot of oversight. Th there's a lot of oversight, and this was all prescribed by the ballot measure. Uh, we're also in the process of bringing in a new leader into the Housing Bureau whose primary responsibility will be to make sure that those bond resources are deployed as effectively as possible. I'm really interested in bang for the buck and making sure that we can get as much affordable housing with the resources that that bond measure provides. We've got to be accountable to the public because it is a ballot measure based bond. And so uh, we know there'll be a lot of scrutiny. I want to make sure we get it right. The city, I think, uh, has $26.5 million that you've set aside for the homeless crisis. And I want to talk about a specific example in the homeless crisis first. We've been following the story of a, a Lentz homeowner who wants to be known simply as Donna. Her southeast Portland home is right next to a piece of ODOT land where homeless campers are living. She's reported a series of attempted break-ins in her property, threats, disturbing behavior, and she says she can't get any help. She's kind of getting the runaround. She lives in fear. Let's listen to what Donna told us. I just want somebody to, 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 to protect us. We shouldn't have to live like this. What do you hope happens? <laughs> that they leave and, and not come back because right now they have an ax up there and I don't know what other weapons they have. And until something happens to me and my daughter, they're not going to do nothing. 
So the, the Portland police say that that's not their jurisdiction, it's ODOT land. ODOT says they're not enforcers, they can't clear campers quickly. So she's basically getting the runaround. Is there any way the city could have some kind of clearing house to handle these kinds of complaints so people like Donna don't feel lost and, like she says, living in fear? Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, that's exactly what we did. I convened in my office folks from ODOT, PBOT, TriMet, Sheriff's Office, Police Bureau, folks from Gresham, uh, neighborhood leaders. Uh, we brought them all together for the purpose of coordinating our response to homeless situations. Uh, where she's referring to is close to the 92nd Flavel area. There's an ODOT parcel, a Portland Parks Bureau parcel, a TriMet parcel, uh, and I believe there's somebody else in the mix too. And what was happening was we'd clear a site and they'd move to the jurisdiction next door. They'd have to repost it and go through the process all over again. Now we're working together, we're posting simultaneously, and we're enforcing simultaneously. In addition, we put four more park rangers uh, on the beat in that area, so I, I think Donna will see uh, market improvement in, uh, in the, the weeks ahead if she hasn't already seen market improvement. Well, that is good news for Donna. Only about 20 seconds, Mayor. Is there something that you'd like to leave viewers with? Well, I, I'd just like to say, uh, as always, I really appreciate the support I get from this community. I do my level best at every day. I'm always happy to have people send me emails, uh, call my office, let me know what else we could be doing. I, I appreciate the feedback that I've been getting so far. You have got a lot on your plate. That Good luck, Mayor. Thank you. Appreciate your being here on Straight Talk. I appreciate it. And here's a reminder of it. Straight Talk airs twice a week on KGW, Saturday at 4.30 p.m. and Sundays at 6.30 p.m. right after NBC Nightly News. Thank you once again to my guest, Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler, and thank you for watching. We'll see you next week for Straight Talk. Thinking about new appliances?